I decided to call this video Meritocracy versus Idiocracy. One is based on a film which I'm going to explain the premise of in a minute, but two, um, it, it is kind of the choices we face. I mean, it was the choice the American electorate faced was, do you vote for an idiot who cackles all the time and has nothing to say for herself and can't get away from identity politics or do you vote for somebody with common sense and democracy won through which is great because in Europe, in England in parts of Europe democracy is not winning through autocracy and, and freedom of speech is, is being banned but the thing that concerns me most is the educational systems because as the scene in the US it's actually very easy to get DEI out of your institutions but if you can't get it out of the thoughts and minds of your educators, then they'll be educating under certain criteria that don't meet the critical thinking analysis rule of educating, which is teaching people how to think. And it fits into the role of teaching people what to think, which is very much the same thing as propaganda, but in school terms. Um, a great example of this is all of the top Western universities in the world. Their top five funders are Qatar, the UAE, which is part of Qatar, but Qatar's donated so many billions more, it has its own thing at the top. China is third, you'd think it'd be first, but it's third. Saudi Arabia's fourth. Saudi are neither allies nor not, but they're very powerful and they've got enough crown princes to throw away if one goes off and does something bad. So, um, and then you have Iran. That's the top five donators to Western education. And it's no wonder that the youth have not had the right education and are pitting themselves against the world with this oppressor versus oppressed victim of na narrative that doesn't serve anyone because nobody's happy being in a constant state of victimhood with an echo chamber of people who validate their victimhood and compare it to other victimhoods using Marxist intersectional uh, victimhood theory. It's a Marxist communist idea and it doesn't work because you're looking at me and I'm a 42 year old man. I'm right at the bottom. I'm a 42 year old white straight man. I'm right at the bottom of the pole. But here's something you don't know. I'm disabled. Right in the thick of victimhood, if I chose to be. I choose not to be, but there you go. So when you judge a book by its cover, judge it. Um, if you judge a book by its cover, you're going to get the book wrong. That's just a fact. So if you judge someone by their skin colour, you're going to get that person wrong. That's not saying skin colour doesn't exist. That's not saying race doesn't exist. It's not saying we don't notice it. Of course we do. I have had a very multicultural life, uh, multicultural life, both here and abroad. So I've got friends in a whole load of places. So when I see someone Asian, I'm quite curious to see if I can guess exactly which part of Asia they come from. And I'm pretty always right because I know the distinctive features from South Korea, let's say, versus the Philippines, let's say, versus Thailand, versus, you know, ad, ad infinitum. Um, but we have a very significant problem with wokeness, which is ending. And if you if you do like what you're hearing, please do subscribe, like and share, because we need to end wokeness with a bang that just closes the whole thing down. Um, this Generation Z is the first one to be less literate, and have less skills in the STEM field, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, than ever before. It's also the first time that only 20% of all graduates with degrees are male, and yet the STEM fields, which are the four key ones for academic, biological, uh, health-based, and any type of research, only 30% of women have degrees in this. The other 70% the other are men, and they only get 20% of all, all the degrees in the world. So main, mainly the degrees handed out to women are in the social studies aspect of it. And as a psychologist, I can tell you that the women who I've seen come out and try and debate are not debating with a great knowledge of psychology. They haven't been taught union psychology or whatever, so they're not going to make great therapists because they, they're 
there's there's a whole instant gratification movement that goes on with the woke, which is that, that you know they they must be validated, their pronouns must be used, they must feel important and special. Uh, they they get offended very easily because it's a hobby <laughs> to get offended for them, and that's where idiocracy comes in. Now Donald Trump won and set America back on track to be the most powerful democracy in the world, and that's great. And that will happen in England at the next general election. Our prime minister has the lowest population uh, popularity of a British prime minister ever in his first year. And it's uh, the petition to get hit a re a re-election because we've all got buyer's remorse in the UK. A re-election has mounted three million votes, which is the second most powerful petition to be put to Parliament. And Parliament have to discuss it because of the amount of signatures. They have to have a full session on it. Um, and it's staggering the the way that. A government can erode the democratic rights of its citizens for what it sees as social justice. And suddenly a non-hate crime incident where people can go to prison for a tweet, but yet the prisons are so full that a paedophile with, caught with loads of child pornography can't go to prison because there's no room for him. And they are letting out people for early on their prison sentences to make room for people who've posted stuff on X or Facebook. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. I, I do a longer video about that. It's called DEI um, and Equity and uh, Marx's Theories. Uh, the, uh, the Idiocracy. There was a film and uh, roughly the, the plot was... They were supposed to be cryogenically freezing to average human beings for a year, but there was a war and the facility got done. They went 500 years into the future anyway. 500 years into the future, the head of the WWE, the ch champion of the WWE, is automatically the president of the United States. Uh, they have, they use Gatorade to try and uh, water their crops. And it's, it's all about the stupidity. And, and the idea behind it is, uh, the birth rate, which is that, you know, pe people with high IQs have less children. They tend to plan for them more. People with lower IQs have more children, tend to plan for them less. That's a massive generalization there. As I say, it's a massive generalization. That's not, but it is a generalization that's statistically accurate. Um, but there, there will be disparity between each groups. Um, and I'm not saying, by the way, anything to do with race here. IQ and intelligence, some of the brightest people in the world are from every different ethnicity. Uh, one of my most inspiring authors is Thomas Sowell. He's a black economist and a black social justice. He's against social justice, but he plays it out in a very good way. Um, and it's a great book, so The Social Justice Injustices. Um, but... What happens at the moment, if we continue down this trend, our children will start using less and less words and emojis have come into communication, which means adults or, or young adults are, are using emojis to reply to things rather than words. Now, I hope that's going to stop. Because if it doesn't, we're headed towards this idiocracy. This is the first generation that is less intelligent in every single way you can think of than the one before it. And it's not the fault of Gen Z. Pepsi Max. Best Pepsi Max in the world. Sponsor. Um, it's not just Gen Z at all. It's not their fault. They were taught what to think. They were taught to look through history from the lens of the oppressor versus the oppressed and try and find a victim narrative in there. They were also taught a whole load of communist and Marxist ways of thinking. And this is down to the people who taught them, who brainwashed them, essentially. Uh, if you look at trans ideology as a, just a, a background, in 2019, it was a mental health disorder and it was pretty much under control. It affected 0.04% of people. And since that WHO declassified it for no academic reason whatsoever, no new papers or, or sciences had come up. And now we've got 
it, it's a major part of culture. It's a, it was a major part of the political debate in the US that got voted out. So wokeness got voted out. Um, and now we need to actually attack the mainstream of education and ensure that our children are being taught what they want to be taught. And there's a wonderful end to this, which is that the generation below Generation Z don't look up to them. They look down on them. And it's sad in one way, but it's good in another way because they actually want to study and learn. And they point out now, I've seen this on several videos, uh, they're not being taught history in the correct way. They want to learn it without any bias attached to it. I thought that was wonderful as a 10-year-old kid just giving a bollocking to a whole uh, school board that he wants to be taught history without any type of bias to it. He just wants to know the facts. Because if you delete history, then you're not only doomed to repeat it, you're guaranteed to repeat it. If you don't remember it, you, you're doomed to repeat it. But if you delete it, guaranteed repetition. And that will mean mass culling of people um through through different ideologies because dei wherever it's been implemented successfully has always led to communism and i would say that england is becoming a socialist state against the will of its people that's not democracy that's idiocracy okay democracy is we we elect people to serve us we pay their salaries from our taxes ergo we decide or we should have a say in what they do in government. Now, I'm very sad that for 10 years, anything that I have paid to the government, I imagine has been wasted on causes I don't support. Social sciences aren't working. Social, um, so social justice is cosmic justice, and it's so poorly defined that nobody can agree on a specific set of definitions, even if they're in that group. So I would just say, I'll leave it here, but we need to be focused on our children's education because that's where things have gone wrong. That's why we have such just divided people, such disparity of ideas and no real unity is because of a whole load of left, far left or left wing that makes up 90% of educators, left or far left, and a hefty amount of left or far left. So they've been teaching far left ideologies and, and teaching the kids not how to think critically about them, how, because any criticism of them is shut down in schools, but it's how to actually look at the education system. And we need to be involved. We need to involve ourselves. We need, as parents, we need to involve ourselves to make sure our kids aren't being taught rubbish because the rubbish that the Generation Z were taught means effectively they almost have to go back to school to learn the real world. And the real world is, is rejecting woke punch after punch after punch. Woke in, in symbol, symbolism, in boxing, woke is on the rings, in the corner, fighting against a lot bigger, a lot stronger person. And it's just failing everywhere. Because when you analyse anything that's come from the woke ideology, it is not based in any type of... Um, any type of science and it's not even psychologically accurate it's psychologically insane um you know there was no need to declassify things that were uh, mental health disorder i have ptsd I, I don't feel labeled by that sorry i don't i've had it for 22 years i manage it well people with gender dysphoria should not feel labeled for their feeling their genuine feeling of needing to needing to be in the other body but 40 years of study shows that the maximum percentage of people who suffer with gender dysphoria is 0.04 percent as maximum ever and that it, it before it was available for minors 85 percent of people who thought they had gender dysphoria or were even diagnosed with gender dysphoria decided to stay in the same body and almost all exclusively entered same-sex relationships so the confusion was around sexuality not gender equally everyone who's been transitioned and this is again slight exaggeration because i say everyone but a high percentage of the people transitioned from one sex to another have another major mental health disorder 
in the background, like bipolar, like schizophrenia, like um, autism, ADHD. There's always something, and there's always some anxiety and depression in there. So all I'm saying is let's take a, take a step back. Let's look at education as a way of cre creating minds that can think for themselves and can look at the world and make sense of it for, for themselves on their own. That's the whole point. We don't need to educate people so that they can join a group to keep repeating the same things to each other because you're never going to grow or learn if you're part of a group that agrees with everything you say because it's fashionable to agree with everything you say. Um, and the rise in trans population, let's take it as a minimum of 1% scientifically impossible the only thing it can be is either installed by teaching like in bringing in gender queer studies gender studies drag uh, queen story hour and that would be installing gender dysphoria and then there's the other side of people who who use it from a fashionable point of view and they, don't get me wrong there are millions of them um who use who do it for fashionable reasons to fit in. If you type in the top five things about being um, being trans, you, your videos will alarm you because none of them are actually about gender dysphoria. Um, and I'll say this last thing, if you do suffer with gender dysphoria and you do honestly believe that you feel that you are um, in the wrong body and you're in the ages of, uh, I don't know, any, any sort of teenage years to 30, get out of the big group of trans activists because they're not active activists for people for gender dysphoria they're activists for people who want to play in women's sports um go to go in women's bathrooms not have the surgery but pretend that they're a woman um you if you haven't had the surgery you're nowhere near a woman a woman is a f isn't much more than just a thought and i'm sorry if you think you're a woman one day that's a thought a woman is much much more in depth than that so i'm sorry it's just you think you're a woman there is no world in which a trans man is a woman and old school trans men believe in that including blair white and caitlin jenner that she can never be a woman caitlin jenner and she's a great advocate against trans people in sports um but she can agree she can never be a woman all the original trans people who fought for their rights they were fought, fighting for the rights to change sex and to live life as a woman that's very different than being one okay living life as a woman and, and having that thought in your head that could be real gender dysphoria and that's perfectly acceptable but you can never become an actual biological woman men can never get pregnant these ideas are absurd in their um analysis so i i honestly don't see why people still push these ideas men can get pregnant we can have periods you know it just here's a question I remember a question if the if an ambulance man turns up to a, a trans man's house and he's bleeding they do not check to see if he's had a period because no person who was born a male has yet to have a period. So Tim Waltz, you probably shouldn't have spent $41.5 million on tampons in male and boys' bathrooms when, when there was no evidence that anyone had ever had a period who was of the male sex. And I'll end with this. We've got so twisted in this world that two people were given a gold and silver medal so the gold and silver medal winners of the female Olympics last this year were two men with their penises who were hitting 25 to 40% harder than any of the women and destroyed them all in bouts. One had to quit after 43 seconds. Now, I'm sorry, but when you talk about people talking about spiking a volleyball, that's nothing. Throwing a punch, if you're punching a woman and getting rewarded for that by the woman's champion of the world, but you're a biological male, the world has gone insane and it needs to become sane again. Democracies need to rule again and our rulers need to do what we put them there to do, which is to make laws that protect us and advance our society. So I'll leave it there. Give me some thoughts, give me some comments, let me know what you think of the idea. But I think education is the key focus now. Wokeness is pretty much going out of 
fashion everywhere, but education still has it. And that's the key area to, to think about trying to stop the wokeness and trying to stop woke in its tracks. If we can get into academia and stop it there, uh, we will. And I think it, there's going to be a huge movement in the US because I think a lot of these colleges are going to not get any funding whatsoever. Um, so we'll see. But at the moment, it looks like our enemies have spent billions upon billions since 2002 to push a, an educational directive that they wanted our children to have. The professors accepted it, including the speakers that they allowed on campuses, some of them violent Islamist people calling for riots and calling for, for jihads on stage at places like Harvard and Oxford. It's not on. But I'm just going to again repeat this. The female boxing, the female Olympic boxing gold medal winner is a man with a penis. Now, if the world isn't messed up with that fact in it, then I think the mind of the person who's listening to that fact needs to be checked out and have it sort of uh, de decolonized and de-brainwashed because there's no world in which a world female champion should be a man. I'm saying that there's no world ever where that should be true. I'll leave it there. So you take it easy. Um, you be lucky this week. I'll be good and I'll see you soon.